Hi guys, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Eiffel Tower in watercolors. So I've already got most of my prep done here. I've got my water out and I have taped down my paper and I'm going to start by just covering the whole surface with clear water. So this is similar to stretching your paper but it's kind of a cheat sheet way to do it. So I just want to cover the whole thing, clear water, and I want it to be shiny wet, not puddle wet. Feel free to do this step a couple hours ahead of your painting because it has to dry 100% before you actually work on the main body of it. So I'm doing it right now, and I'm gonna wait for it to dry completely before I start my actual painting. All right guys, my paper is all dry now. It's, um, it's buckled a little here, but doing that pre-wetting technique is going to help it to buckle less um, while I'm actually painting. And this is especially important when you're using student grade paper. Artistic grade papers won't warp as much in general, so just keep that in mind. All right, now I am going to start with the sky here, and I'm going to do a technique that I haven't shown on the channel yet, and it involves this brush. This is a big mop brush here, and Basically what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna start with my flat brush. So let's let's start with that. So let's keep this not confusing. Start with the flat brush. And I'm just going to use this mix I've already made of some cerulean blue and some ultramarine blue. It's one of my favorite combinations for skies. I'm gonna start with pigment right at the top. Now my brush is pretty juicy here. I want a pretty juicy brush. I'm going to give it a couple strokes just to establish the top. And now I'm going to use my mop brush. Now I've saturated the mop brush and when you saturate it, it gets this cool um, shape to it on the end. It's sort of, it's really hard to describe, um, but I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean when I put it down. When I pounce a wet mop brush, it gets this really cool sort of speckled effect. And um, I really find that a lot of daytime clouds really look more like this. They're not so much solid masses as they are separate little speckles. So this is, um, this is a technique that I'm using because I haven't showed it on the channel and because I have this brush. Now, if you don't have a mop brush, Seriously, don't, don't feel like you have to go get one. Um, I demonstrate how to do clouds a different way in my tutorial about painting the New York skyline. And all that needs, all that um, requires is just a paper towel. So I encourage you to check that out. If you don't have a mop brush, seriously, do not feel like you have to go get one. This is just um, a special technique that I really like for this painting. I wanna make sure I get enough color, but I want them to look like clouds. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna go back to my flat brush. And I decided to paint the Eiffel Tower here sort of nearing sunset. It's not exactly sunset, but it's not daytime really anymore. So it's blue at the top, but then it fades into this lovely um, sort of dark yellow color. And I just really liked that. But it's your painting, so feel free to paint it at any time of day. Dusk, I think would be really pretty or sunrise, or high noon, whatever you want. This is just my personal preference. So now I've loaded up my flat brush with yellow. Now it's very important here that you get the two colors, the blue and the yellow, to touch, but you don't want them to blend because they will make green. So just very lightly go along the edge of that. Do not try to blend them together. Trust me on that. And I'm going to drag this guy all the way to the bottom here. And feel free to add more texture either with your brush, kind of like what I'm doing, or you can also take a paper towel, um, a dry paper towel, and add it that way. This is a pretty liftable yellow I've got here, so I can add some depth that way. So just be careful of these two colors turning to green. You can probably see here there's a tiny little strip where they start to turn to green. So the wetter you have it, 
um, the more in danger I think you are of that. So just, just be mindful of that. That would not look good. The sky is rarely green. <laughs> Hopefully the sky is not green. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to add a few extra touches that I just like personally on my clouds. I'm switching to a small round brush and I've got some watered down Payne's Gray on my brush right now. And I'm just gonna go in and dot in some shadows for my clouds. Now, depending on how wet your paper is, you might get some sort of cauliflower-like blooms now, I honestly don't mind that in clouds. I, I actually think it can look very pretty for clouds, but some people really don't care for that. So, you know, just really keep that in mind. If your paper is not wet enough to dot in color at this point and you don't like blooms, then skip it because you will get them. All right, pretty happy with that. I love the depth that just this extra step can add. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use Burnt Sienna this time for some of my cloud detailing on the yellow. Now this yellow dried really fast, so it's actually almost entirely dry as I put this on. So to make sure I don't get a hard line, I'm going to go back in and wet it down, just sort of fade it out. A lot of watercoloring, especially in landscapes, is about improv um, improvisation. Make sure I say that correctly here. I think that the faster you act on your feet, the more likely you are to make paintings better, to save them, and make them more interesting, honestly. All right, just soften that up a little bit. I don't want hard lines. And then I'm gonna allow this whole sky to dry. If you have any really big areas of puddle, then feel free to sop them up with your paper towel. All right, now my sky is dry. It's not cool to the touch, so I'm ready to work on it. And I'm pretty happy with it. It dried quite a bit lighter than when I first put it on. And if you're new to watercolors, that is going to happen with all your paintings. Watercolors always dry lighter than when you first put them down. I like to think of it like fabric. If you get fabric wet, it immediately looks darker. So watercolors are the same way. When they're wet, they're darker. When they dry out, they will dry lighter. So now I'm going to, before I do the actual tower, I'm going to add a little bit of a sort of fading city background behind it. Because I want my Eiffel Tower to be sort of expressionistic and dr um, dramatic, like a silhouette. Um, so I just want a little bit of a little bit of a city behind it sort of to frame it. And I'm gonna start with, I've got my number eight round brush, I'm gonna start with that. And here on my palette is a mix of sepia and Payne's gray. And they make a lovely sort of neutral graphite gray when they're mixed together. So I'm gonna start with a light shade of that. I'm just going to, let's see, probably like the bottom fifth of my painting. I'm just going to do some little building outlines. And this is completely up to you how realistic you want to make it. I really don't want mine to be too precise because I want my Eiffel Tower to be the main focus. So, you know, just sort of have fun with this part. And this is the first layer. I'm going to add a couple layers to give depth to the skyline. All right, so this is basically the first layer and I'm going to do the other few layers now and I think I'll speed up the footage so that you guys, you guys are smart. I'm sure you get the idea. So here we go.
right, so my last little layer of city here is dry, and I like the way this looks. It's pretty vague, it is expressionistic, but you still know it's there, so I'm happy with my city. And I've just taken a normal ruler and a mechanical pencil, and I've drawn a sort of upside down V, um, very lightly in pencil, on my paper. And this is just so that I have a little bit of a skeleton to work off of. Feel free to draw nothing at all, or to draw the whole tower. It's totally up to you and how comfortable you are with um, painting something so precise and architectural. So I just, um, I just like to have this outline. I'm going to freehand it from this point on. And I'm using that same mix that I used for the city below it. Just I'm going even darker still. And feel free to pull up a reference photo or to just follow along with me. Um, it's totally up to you and, you know, your comfort level and your skill level, how, um, how much extra assistance you want with this part. But I'm going to dive right in here and I'm just going to sort of paint it off of memory. The tower is mainly um, just a collection of lines and crisscrosses within those lines. So it's actually not very difficult to paint. I just like to break it up into sections. It's basically three sections. There's a bottom arch, a sort of middle with a window in it, and the top with a little point. If you don't have much experience painting straight lines, then definitely practice a little bit first because, you know, in architectural paintings, if it looks lopsided or, you know, any other um, sort of geometric imperfection, it really is going to detract from the painting. So don't be afraid to try it, but maybe practice a little first. And if your first one doesn't look good, that's okay. Just paint another one. It's just paper, guys. If you really feel too intimidated by this part, then also feel free to just trace an outline of the tower onto your paper. It's okay if you want to cheat a little the first time. This sort of detail painting can be pretty stressful if you're just approaching watercolor for the first time. I do encourage you, however, to try it at least once on your own merit because it will make you a better painter. Even if it looks terrible at the end, I'm sure you will learn something. Nobody has to see it if you don't like it. All right, now my piece is 100% dry and I've already signed it, so all that's left to do is take off my masking tape. I'm going to remove it slowly, pulling at a 90 degree angle. Alright guys, here's our finished piece up on the wall, and I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I've got all the other places that you can find Witty Gritty and my work on the internet at the end of this video. Thanks again for watching. I hope you paint something beautiful. Bye!